This is Lab 7, After Effects Day 1, Basic Animation. Alright, so for today's lab, uh, obviously we're starting After Effects, like I told you guys we'd be doing. Uh, today you're going to be learning what you lose, used in lecture to create a basic After Effects project. You're going to create some temporary opening credits, both today and next class. You're actually going to be creating two separate opening title sequences. Uh, or if you want to make a really complex one, I guess it's okay if you make one. Or you're pretty much going to be expanding upon your second one anyways, or your first one into your second one. But uh, we take it step by step. So anyways, for this class though, uh, but, but mainly I want to point out that you guys should all have two pretty much. Uh, but we, for the credits, we need at least four. Uh, the, these are some recommendations. You don't have to exactly use these credits. Maybe like uh, Full Sail University Presents or Group 1, 2, or 3 Presents. The name of your movie produced by and directed by. Uh, if you want to come up with other things, like maybe your main actors, and, and, and instead of produced and directed by, you can do that. That's fine also. Uh, but that's an option I'll leave to you guys. You can use animated presets or basic transform properties, but each of these titles must be keyframed in some way, shape, or form. They can't just click in and out, and that would be that, okay? So just be sure to try and remember to have it animate in and animate out also. You know, I hate hard cutoffs unless if you intended for it, and it's like with music or something or other. All right. So uh, going into this next one, uh, things to go over. I'll be going over animation presets. I know we probably already showed you this today, but I'm going to show you guys how to adjust them, making them shorter, splitting layers, and even reversing them. Uh, also how to make solids and for our backgrounds possibly. Some smaller stuff, how to do title save, zooming, jump into a specific time, moving one frame at a time in the timeline, accidentally double clicking on a layer and what happens then, and some hot key fun and even bringing footage in from Final Cut Pro. Uh, so those are all the things I'm going to be going over. Things are websites that we have to help that I always recommend. Videocopilot.net is a very good one. CreativeCow.com. You know, just look up uh, After Effects tutorials and you'll find a crap ton on the web there. Okay. And last but not least, what it's due today, four titles. Like I said, they don't have to specifically be those, but they ha there does have to be four. Keyframe the transform properties on each title. At least one animation preset and presentable and flows nicely between 15 to 30 seconds. Or, uh, or if you have it going with some footage in the beginning, that's fine too. Uh, save as last name, first initial, group 3, AE1. Uh, be sure to save these. Don't just throw these away. All right. So now let's jump into what we're going to be going over today. I'm probably actually going to start with bringing in footage from Final Cut Pro. So I'm going to switch on over to this program. And here's my Final Cut Pro right here. And here I have, let's say, uh, this is a movie I'm working on. Uh, say I have this sequence in the beginning that I, you know, I have forced or something that I want to... Uh, put my titles over uh, as we're kind of going through this forest area or maybe on this girl or something. Um, but anyways, let's say I have all this opening opening title here and it's only up to, I don't know, about the one minute mark, okay? I can record an in and out point by hitting I and O and I can mark my O point for my out point there. And pretty much now I'm only going to be exporting this little area right here. And then I just go up to File. I clicked File. Let's go. File, Export. And then the top one, quick time movie, and then that's pretty much it. I just tell it where to save. Okay, so then I would say blah, 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 and then, you know, type in what I want there. And obviously in this case, I might be like, you know, Schultz 2 AE might be a good one to, to do. All right, you don't have to check recompress all frames, but be sure make movie self-contained is checked. Okay, and then you just hit save, and then it saves it, and then you import it into After Effects. So that's how you'd uh, possibly do that. We can also export out of After Effects. Uh, without a black background or anything, so it's actually called what, what's called like an alpha export, and uh, and that you can also just put over your opening titles if you want to time it out or o over an opening sequence. But you know, either way, you can do it. Doesn't matter. All right, so that's how to do the first one that I said. Um, that was uh, going bringing footage in from Final Cut Pro. All right, so let's go on over to After Effects, and I will start with animation and presets, adjusting them and making them shorter and such like that. Okay, so. Uh, first, you have your blank screen, and if you guys want to follow along with me, you guys can. doesn't really matter. So first things first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to make a new composition, right? You just go up to Composition, New Composition. That's the easy way to do it. Now, by default, I think it always goes to the NTSC DV 720 by 480 Be careful. You guys, this footage is not 720x480. Okay, 1280 by 720 uh, with a frame rate of 23.976. And if you want to change your duration to 30 seconds, that's fine also. Now... If you have a comp, I'm even going to cancel that, a way that you can be 100% for sure uh, what size your footage is, and I'm just going to grab some random footage here. Let's see here. Um, and I'll just pick this one. And so if I imported in one of my files, uh, just any movie file, 
And if I was to actually click and drag and drop this onto this make composition icon down here, you guys can see that it's right there. Okay. There's my make composition icon. If I was to click and drag and drop that on there, you guys will notice that it not only makes a new composition, but the composition settings, if I was to go to my composition, composition settings are Apple K is the hotkey, you would see that not only is it the same size, 2000, um, 2048 by 1152 with the same frame rate, but it also does the length, okay? So that's also a very short way to just drag a clip right on there, make sure it's the right size, and then if I wanted to, I could even just erase that and now begin with my opening title sequence, okay? And if you want to relabel something, just click on it and hit enter, and I could be like, opening titles. All right, so that's a for sure way to know, you know, that you have the correct sizing of your footage um, every time, all the time. It's just like in, in uh, Final Cut Pro when you drop it into the sequence, it says, are you sure you want to make the sequence the same as the clip and you hit yes? We're doing a similar thing here, and, and it's definitely good to know because I had so many people in the last class who did it 720 by 480, even though I just said this right now. I don't know why they still did it, but anyways, they did. So that's a way to alleviate that, but now you also know 1280 by 720, it's up there. All right, so let's, let's get into actually animating. So I'm going to type up a title here, and I'm going to go to my T tool all the way at the top there. And what's what's one of the names of your guys' movies? PMS? Yep. P-M -S, S. Okay. Whoops, typed that wrong. All right, so first off, you guys can see that's mighty small. Um, I, once I'm done with the title, I usually just go right back to my arrow so I don't get lost. Um, Going right back to that arrow alleviates a bunch of things because now I can even go over here and increase my font size. That's one good thing about the program. You don't have to highlight the text like you do sometimes uh, because I'm going to make that a lot bigger. There it is, PMS. And I have a 28 days later font. That's a little weird. Uh, so I might cycle through some of my fonts that I have here. I'm, I'm simply just clicking over here on my font names and I'm just hitting the up and down arrow. That's kind of a cool one. Uh, I got a whole bunch of different fonts that you guys probably won't have because... I went to different websites and checked them out. So anyways, here's my PMS title, all right? And uh, I have it as a very big. And if I wanted to, I could even give it an outline, which sometimes it's good to have. Uh, maybe if I want more of like a red outline around it to show, um, you know. I didn't mean to go there, but I guess I did. <laughs> uh, and then I can increase it. But this one it's kind of weird on because it's got all these little dots. So... Um, but that's, uh, that's how to do that. It's playing with your stroke over fill or fill over stroke. And, and there's a little bit of that. So I might take it off just by hitting the little line. But there's my PMS title. Okay. Whoops. Did not mean to do that. Okay. So I'll leave that right there. And to put the animation presets on, I pretty much just go up to animation, browse presets. Okay. Pop up this guy. This will open up my Adobe Bridge program. Okay, there it goes. All right, and what you guys might see is we have a whole bunch of different things in here. Again, I might have more than you guys might or even these computers do because I've downloaded a bunch of stuff or bought a bunch of stuff uh, and, and, and everything like that. So anyways, um, I'm going to check out the text. But the main one I want to point out, which I'll point out backgrounds and synthetics in a moment, but I'm going to check out text right now. And mainly what I'm going to look for is an animation preset that I want to put on my title. Uh, one that I found earlier, and for time's sake, I'm just going to go straight to the one I know of, which is the transporter. There it is. Okay, that's awesome. I really want that one, okay? So in order to apply the effect, I simply double-click on transporter, and it now applies it to my uh, title. Now, this is actually kind of good that this popped up because it says, After Effects Error, can't import file transporter FX unsupported file type or extension. This might happen on occasion. might not happen all the time, but it might happen on occasion where it says it cannot put that effect on there for some crazy reason. If that ever happens, I just go over to my Effects and Presets tab, and I can just type in Transporter right here. Okay? Because now I've already seen it. I've already seen a preview of it, and I simply drag and drop this on there. Now, the Transporter effect will happen wherever your playhead is, so just know that. And also, just so you know it, if you double-click on it and bridge, and you don't have whatever word you want selected, it'll actually make another word called Adobe After Effects, and it'll put the effect onto that one. So just be sure you have the layer selected you want to apply it to, and the playhead where you want it to start. So now, um, what was the magical key that Mike had told you guys to hit, or Will told you guys to hit, if you want to check out all the keyframes, you remember? U. That is correct. All right. So I'm going to hit U, and now I can see there's my, little, my keyframes for it, and here's PMS coming in in a pretty cool manner. All right. So if you're like, wow, that's awesome, I want my PMS to now go out uh, in the same way, okay? And if you guys want to make this shorter, guess what? Just move these keyframes closer together. Bam, just like that, 
All right, so there's my little PMS title comes in, and I want it to fade out about five seconds. All right, so there's two things we can do here. I'm gonna highlight this, okay? And I'm like, I want it to do the exact same transporter out. So you will see that if I drag and drop this transporter on there again, that it actually erased my first one, okay? I can't even see my first one anymore. And you only see the second one. And you're like, Snickers, I want them both to appear, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know why I said Snickers, but. Uh, so anyways, if you want that to happen, it's because it's I'm pretty much telling it to fade in twice. But if you ever see one, and, and just to show you guys, this fade in right here, or this animation is a fade in. If you guys see, it's only a fade in. They don't have a transporter fade out. But the cool thing is, is we can kind of tell the computer to do that simply by highlighting these keyframes. Then I right click on it and I go to keyframe assistant time reverse keyframes. When I do that, now it's actually doing the animation reverse. So I'm going through and now it's actually doing it. The transporter fade out. All right. And I said I wanted this to take place over five seconds. There it is right at about five seconds um, and let's see here almost let's see if I can get it right on the dot all right bam bam highlight them and then move them and five seconds and it's faded out perfectly okay so there it is here it is coming in and then here it is going out All right, it's taking forever. All right, but for the most part, we get it. <coughs> now, in order to, um, I always say when you're done animating a layer, and I'm done with it, always cut the layer and end it, because it does a couple things. <clears throat> takes up less time for the computer to render, because it knows the layer is done with and it's over with. Uh, it also prevents phantom layers kind of popping up later in the timeline. So I always end these layers. Now, you can end them either using your hotkeys, option brackets is the way to cut layers, or you can just go to the end right here, and as you guys can see, I have the double arrows popped up right there, and I'm just clicking and dragging, okay? But I prefer my option, right bracket will cut the end of it, and that's a good way to move it, all right? <clears throat> so uh, that is pretty much how to make the title uh, and how to reverse it and stuff like that. Now, there will be seldom occasions, where, and this is what I sometimes, if, if this ever happens, if you ever have it that where you're trying to put on two effects and the effects won't let you put them both on the same layer for some crazy reason, you're like, why won't they let me put the same effect on? You can always do what's called splitting a layer real fast. So I could go edit, split layer, and then you can apply different effects to both sides because now it's pretty much the same layer, but I just split it in half so I can apply it to both sides. But that's only if you have something like that it happen where like sometimes effects will start fighting each other and one, one won't let one work. So if that ever happens, just split the layer and then you can pull this off. Okay. Um, so I'm going to undo that for now though. <clears throat> let me see what else I got to go over. Where did it go? There it is. All right, so that was animation presets, adjusting them, making them shorter, splitting layers, and reversing them. So I showed all that. Now we're gonna actually make a solid for the background, okay? So if I want a background, I can go up to layer, new, and then solid for my background, bring that up. And uh, I can pick any color. If I was to click on this, I could pick any color if I really wanted to, I'm just gonna okay. Uh, just because you guys will see what happens when I put a background on there. So I'm gonna go back to my browse presets and um, <clears throat> on, uh, not in the text, but under the uh, backgrounds, there's one under backgrounds. You have a whole bunch of different backgrounds you guys can put on there. Uh, to have kind of like a cool looking background. Uh, in this case, I might, let's see here, I'll select this one maybe. Nah, I kind of like this one better. <clears throat> All right. Uh, there's also one under synthetics under there. It's got a few on there also that you guys can look at if you'd so like or desire. This one's kind of simple, easy and flowing. I kind of like that one actually. We'll go with this one. Okay. So it's a gold ambience. In order to apply this one, just like always, I always just double click on it and it applies it to the layer, but I got the same pop up for some reason my uh <clears throat> or my bridge program and my uh my after effects are not communicating very well so i'm going to type in gold here so i can find that background there it is gold ambience and i'm simply going to drag and drop that on there all right so there it is now the thing is is what you guys might notice is here my background is and it seems to stop moving right about here i'm just kind of cycling through it and it seems like my layers stopped moving, but if I don't want it to stop, if I want it to continue moving through the whole timeline, um, I can hit that famous key again, that U for Uber key, and I can see that there's my key frames that's not letting it move in the beginning nor at the end here. So if I wanted that to happen, usually what I can do is I can just highlight those and just move these key frames a little bit longer. So that way I can be sure that my 
uh, background is animating the whole time. Okay, so I might move that there. If I can get it right on the point. Okay, that's close enough. And then I can just highlight these and move these further down. And if you want to, it might take a little calculation, because if you're like, well, I want to separate it, but I don't want my background to go slower, uh, you can kind of calculate it out by increasing these numbers to what the, the, uh, the preset already had. All right. So if I wanted to be able to see my title, obviously I'd have to move this beneath my title in the timeline, and now I should be able to see my title PMS pop up. All right. Just so you guys know, you can put a background even in a text layer. So if I was to ever um, put one, let me see, i got to find one. I'm going to have to type it in there anyways. So let's go to backgrounds. And I'll put, um, I'll put this deep tissue right here into my text. So I can just type deep tissue over here. There it is. And drag and drop that on there. Pop, pop, pop. And now it's inside my text. Once you give it a moment. There it is. Okay. So you can apply these backgrounds inside text also. Just so you know. All right. That is a little bit about the backgrounds and applying them. And uh, don't forget to cut off your layers, your background layers when they're done too. And mainly the point is, is that uh, the backgrounds are keyframeable also. So just hit U and check it out. All right, and this is just a little sidebar here, but in certain instances when you put on a background, you might have certain letters, like in this case my E, is getting lost in my background. If that ever happens, just select on your text and make sure you put on, as I pointed out before, you know, a little just a little outline around it. See, now you can clearly define my E, you know, play with your stroke over fill or fill over stroke and see which one you like better. In this case, I like the stroke over fill. Maybe play around with the parameter a little bit, depending on how much you want to stick it out. And that'll definitely make it so you can see that E, so it's very well defined. All right. Going into the next part. That was uh, making a solid and having that as my background. And as it says, guess what? The backgrounds have keyframes too. Um, I have, I want to put on title safe and zooming and jumping to a time. So uh, in order to put title safe on, it's really simple. I just simply click on this icon right here. And there it is, right there, title and action safe right there at the top. All right. So if I was to zoom all the way in here, it looks like this guy. Okay, there it is. And right next to it, if I want to go to a specific time, you can see the timeline. There it is. And so if I want to go to a specific time, I simply click on that, and it pops up. And then I can type in like 200 to go to two seconds, hit enter, and it moves my playhead there. I could also just click on this one, and that would do it too. All right. Uh, stick with me. I'm almost done. Don't let me lose you. Um, that was title safe, zooming and jumping to a time. In order to zoom, if you guys haven't noticed already, if I just scrub on the ball up and down, it zooms in and out. But if you're like, man, this is going crazy, you can always just click on this right here and just go to fit up to 100%, and it'll zoom it on out, okay? Also, the hotkey for that is shift slash, right next to each other, so it's pretty, pretty good to know. All righty. Now, I wanted to bring that up over there, okay? So that was title safe, zooming and jumping to a time. Moving one frame at a time, just so you guys know, it is not regular left and right arrow. I know it might seem like that because it is in Final Cut Pro. It's actually holding down Apple and, and hitting your arrow, okay? So hold down the Apple, App L, and hit it uh, right or left, okay? And that will move you one frame at a time, as you guys can see me doing. I hit it a whole bunch of times, so it's going to move a whole bunch of times, okay? <clears throat> um, also, page up and page down will do it, too, but... Um, but yeah, I don't have that on my laptop. So so uh, that was moving one frame at a time, accidentally double clicking on a layer and what happens then. And then I only have hot key fun and that's it, okay? So when you accidentally double click on a layer, this is what happens. If I double click on this, it'll bring up the red solid under its specific solid settings. Uh, you'll know that you're on a single, single layer because you'll see this timeline right in the bottom. All right, if you see that timeline, that means that you accidentally double clicked on a layer. If you wanna get back to your composition, just go in the top tab here and hit comp settings or there's this little bitty, what are you doing? Or there's this little bitty button right here that we can click on also that will bring us to that comp also, okay? And then last but not least I have to go over is some of the hot keys. Uh, some of the hot keys, uh, you guys probably already knew B and end because if I want to preview this, I wouldn't want it to go all the way to the end of 20 seconds and then finally come all the way back. I'd probably just hit N right about there, which as you can see, kind of cut my work area short. So if I was to play through it, uh, it would play up to that point, and I'm going to lower my resolution. And that's another thing. If you guys want to lower your resolution and make things go faster, you can do that. Um, so I'm going to hit spacebar. Now it's going a lot faster, thank goodness. Um, so that way it will play faster for you. That's definitely a good thing. So there's my animation. It's going in and out. And as you can see, I shortened my work area. Now if you guys ever notice, like right down here, 
you got your little green line. That only once this green line is done will it play in real time. You guys will also see right over here it pops up in real time, and otherwise it might say uh, see it says not in real time if it's not in real time. Okay, um, but once this green line is done, that means that you can check it out in real time. Now uh, zero also on the number pad, but that's only on your um, that's only on your uh, what's it called only on your keypads there on, on the towers will also do a RAM preview. Regular spacebar just does a regular preview. But if you want to do a RAM preview, it's just up here. RAM preview just basically means that it gets rid of like all the borders and stuff like that so you can view it without any of the handles or anything like that. So it's definitely a good thing. Um, depending on how much RAM your computer has, this little green line might start to shrink. And if that happens, that means you got to shorten your work area because your computer doesn't have enough RAM to play that long of an animation. I will also say that the backgrounds on these computers usually eat up a lot of RAM. So if you ever did your background, you're like, okay, my background's set. It's awesome. I think it looks great. You can always just hit the eyeball and turn it off and, be, and then work on the rest of your titles because there's no purpose in like having that background going because it's only just going to slow you down, to be honest. So uh, once I have that background set, I usually just turn off the eyeball. That way I don't have to keep watching it the whole time until I'm done with it. Then I'll turn it back on. Um, but anyway, so that was a hotkey, B and N. And then another hotkey to jump to the beginning and end of a layer is I and O. So if I want to toggle between the beginning and end of the layer, I can just hit I and O. And I'm just jumping right back and forth there. Uh, also, so you guys know, if you want to... If you hit U, which you guys already knew, and you hit J and K, that'll jump between keyframes. So that's kind of a cool one, J and K. And, uh, and you guys should already know that your regular brackets move a layer, and your option brackets will cut layers. Okay, Cut layers or end layers. All right, so that's mainly the hotkeys I wanted to go over, some of them. Um, brackets, B and N, I and O, J and K, and et cetera. And that's Lab 7.